Okay, um, so welcome everyone. So today we have Dr. Chow with us. Um, uh, um, let me start with a brief introduction of him. So Dr. Chow, right now he's a postdoc at Department of Earth and Planetary Sciences at the University of California, Berkeley. So Dr. Cha, uh, Dr. Charles' research is directed towards understanding the structure, dynamics, and the evolution of Earth's interior by observational and computational seismology. Uh, during his PhD and his post, first postdoc, he tried to probe the internal structure and property of the upper mantle by using array analysis of the fundamental surface waves. He studied the high efficiency of the spectral element method with super high degrees to numerically simulate the acoustic and seismic wave propagation to complicated media. His research also focuses on the study of the intrinsic non-uniqueness of the acoustic full waveform inverse problem. In recent days, his research proposes a more flexible hybrid methods by combining the physical and numerical representation theorems in order to improve the so-called box tomography. These days, he's also working towards the full implementation of the box tomography to compute full 3D remote seismograms globally. Uh, over to you, Dr. Chow. Yeah, okay. thank you for your introduction, Rusan. Yeah, yeah. I'm very happy to be here to share a science study with you guys. And today my talk is about a novel hybrid numerical simulation of the wave equation by combining two kind of representation theory. And there are also a review of these kind of methodologies. And yeah, it's about me. i am got my bachelor in China University of Science, where it's in Wuhan, yeah. And then I got my PhD in Chinese Academy of Science. My major is seismology. And uh, after that, I went to the France to do something like FWI, and then I, doing the quiet, I stay in China for one and a half year. And then this, this uh, August, I come here. And today my content is mainly includes these five parts. One is why and what is hybrid simulation. And second one is what's the theory behind the hybrid simulation. And the third one is the review of the existed five different kind of hybrid in numerical simulation way. And the first one is a new one. And the final one is the example of the Yellowstone by box simulation, also or we can call it a hybrid simulation. As we all know, geodynamics is very important to help us to understand the evolution of the earth. Like the, we know the, the plume is the origin of the upwinding hot materials and the slab, the, their fate is the, end point of thinking of cold materials to the CMB. And uh, like the common boundary is very important interface because it's the exchange location between materials and the energy. All these kind of direct structures are mainly obtained by the seismology, like the global waveform tomography. Here, here, is, here are two research. The left one is from our group and the right one from Princeton, both are global waveform tomography. Both use the seismic data, but with different kind of inversion way. We can say that we can find that the long period structure like the plume here and here and also here is to be, it tend to be the uniform. Also like the code and the faster velocity, they seems like to be the same. But some structures like the small scale anomaly, like the, for example, the, like the UL with the usual low velocity zone, they are, it, it, it can be seen by two different kind of inversion, but the location we can say is different. And this kind of very small scale anomaly is very important to help us to understand the mental convection efficiency during the, Doing when we when we do the um, geodynamic uh, numerical simulation, but but these two kind of uh, studied they use they can only use very relatively long period waveform like 
here is 30 seconds, here is about 20 seconds. And if we, if we want to go to high for a little bit higher, the computation will be very expensive. So we will, then we will think, can we only invert the some key location? Like for example, here we can do, we can, we only want to invert the structure. Uh, beliefs like, like, like the Iceland above the, uh, above the com common boundary by only inverse the very small location so that we can have like high involution, uh, high resolution. Is it possible? So here is, is the way what we will use in the near future is called hybrid simulation. For example, for this picture, left one, people can use the station outside the box. The left one is a traditional global simulation and it is very expensive. And the second one, we can, in fact, we can, we can do the forward simulation only in the box with the input, with the hybrid input, with the equal, with some equal source along the box with the information from the source, from the source, yeah. And this is the kind of setting with the source outside the box, but station inside. And the second one, second setting is like this, with the source in the box, but station outside the box. This kind of setting we can use to pro pro probe the, the source focal mechanism in some very complicated location, such as the uh, subduction location. And the third setting is like this way. We can use some source and the receiver both outside of the box in order to in do some inversion of the remote location with interest. And uh, let's go back to the gl traditional global simulation. We know the computational complexity is NT. Um, NT is the, is the number of time step. NE is the number of elements in X in one direction like x, y, z. D here is three. And, and this, this number is the calculation for each element. We, we will see later about what's the elements, but uh, this is a very simple calculation about the computation complexity. We can say that the NE is NE with D is the number of elements of the whole global Earth. When we do the simulation, we, we can know if we, the elements, the, the spatial size is reduced by 10 times in each direction. The whole course will be reduced by 1,000 times. So this is the reason why we want to only do the forward simulation in some local domain, like the regional uh, telemic travel time tomography way. But here we, we try to use the waveform. And so here is a, a kind of a summary about the four kind of a setting. And the first one A is like the global simulation with both source and the receiver in the box we want to do. And the second one B is the source outside station inside. It's like the, like the right picture in, in last uh, in PPT. We can say that we can use the, so that means we can use some tele event to do the inversion. And the C is the reverse way. That's the source inside the domain. It's a targeted domain. And oh, sorry, for, forget to see. This angle is the global domain. And uh, so that means we can use, we can use science station outside domain to increase the data. And the third one is the, uh, the last one is the source and the receiver, both outside of the domain. And that means we can, we can try to choose the different kind of data let's have a very good coverage of some remote targets and to try to have higher resolution info information uh, in inversion and here is an example of box tomography like what that mean is that we can we can try to only invert some structures in the box here there is a is a is a it's a benchmark with three different kind of inversion. The first one, we can see the left 
this, this picture, and here is the target model. And the, when we do the global simulation, that means we invert all the parameters in the whole domain, and we can find we can get a very good result. And the second box tomography, that means we know the structure outside the box. We exactly know, and we only invert the structure inside. That means when we do the inversion, we only change the par parallelizations inside, uh, the, the values of the par parallelization in the box. And we can see that this result is better than this one. We can see the color is near this one, yeah? So, but this is, no, this is not the real case because we never know the background model. And about the second one is we fully unknown. That means when we do the inversion, we use the, like the prim model as a Bergen model, just do the inversion. We can, sound, we can find that the value, this value is why is perfect. And this is a global simulation, a global inversion. And this one we can say is not very good. And then this is the third one. That means if we know partially knowing that's like, like the long period model, we, we, have, we use the, a, a kind of smooth, smooth version of the target model as, as the starting model. And then we do the inversion. We can find that the, inver the final in inversion result is relatively good at least some location like the low way low 30 zone can be re recovered very well. And then this, this is kind of just a case study, not the real applications. And at least you show that box tomography by the hybrid simulation way can be useful in the near future. And then the second part is about the theory about forward hybrid methods. And uh, the theory is the representation theory of the hybrid method. We know that representation theory stays away that the final, displace, uh, final displacement in each point in the domain is made up from three parts. The one is the body force, and second one is the traction, and third one is the moment tensor. And, uh, and uh, in the global simulation, we only have the, and the normally we only have body force, so we do not have these two parts. But in the box simulation, like the box here, we do not have the force in our box, but we have these two parts. That means we, have, we need to impose some like traction and displacement, displacement exactly in the boundary, on the boundary. And you will see that traction, the contribution will be, will be uh, uh, plus 0.5%, per, uh, 50% inside and 50% outside. And this kind of moment tensor force on the boundary, we have contribution minus 50% outside and 50% inside. So that means we can have a full recovery of the wave field in the box, but zero outside. So that's the part of the very important theory for the hybrid simulations. And this is for elastic wave equation and something the same for the acoustic case. And in the following um, pictures, we will focus on the acoustic case because it's relatively much easier to, to describe. Here, so it's related to the traction. And here is something like elastic is the density moment tensor. Here is an example. For the case that source and receiver, both outside of the box, but with some local aluminum inside the box, how can we do the hybrid simulation? Oh, here is, the, is something like the setting. We can see the different elements. This is an example by the spectral element method way. And, uh, and the source is the black star, receive is the red uh, triangle. And uh, we totally need uh, three steps to do this kind of uh, hybrid simulation. The first one is to do the global simulation. Like the, for example, the blue one is the hybrid input. It's the 
is the um, traction and the displacement in the blue part. When we do the global simulation from the south side, we record the traction and the displacement in this blue domain. And uh, we do some green uh, global simulation and calculate the green functions. But and, um, and in the red one, in the red location, and the, and the green one is the PML absor absorption. Here is an example of the calculations. So when we do the two global simulation, the left one is used to, from the south side, we record the traction displacement in this part, in the blue elements. And then we do the global simulation from the receive side and record the display, displacement and the and displacement and the traction in the red part. It's also called green functions. And then the second step is we impose the recorded value from south side. That means here in the blue element. So that means we can do the simulation locally. And we can see that here, I just show you an example that if there is a heterogeneity inside the box and there is some residual waveform, we are going outside. And this kind of residual waveform will be recorded by the red element. And if it, if the, if the value in the green, uh, in the red element is convolved with the green function just recorded, we can get the final waveforms. So let's, here is a, is a benchmark. The blue one is the global simulation in the homogeneous model. And the black one is this one. We do the global simulation in the heterogeneous model, global one. And the red dashed one is the blue one. Add the convolution result between the green functions and the residual effective body wave, which is which are recorded in the red elements just now. And we can see that, and we can see that the the difference between the black one and the red dash is almost zero. So that means we can obtain the accurate residual waveform from the local lambda. And also this kind of way, we can also use the, for the coupling, like the, this is a solid part and this is the fluid part. Like we can say this is a common boundary. And we can also say that if we have some anomaly just near, just a little bit above the common boundary, we can see that there are some new phase is coming. So we can use this kind of phase to do some inversion for the very deep anomaly in the lowermost mantle. And then there is a review of existing the forward hammer numerical simulations. And before that, I want to give a very, very quick introduction about the spectral element method. This kind of spectral element method now is very popular for global seismology to do the global uh, waveform numerical modeling. And here is a 1D case. The first is a wave equation. And the initial condition is the displacement and velocity both zero. And the free boundary condition, that's the stress is equal to zero, both at the two end point. And the very, and then for the spatial, for the spatial um, discretization, we used the mainly element like one, two, three, oh, sorry, four, five, six. Like here, we ng equal five with five non-overlapping elements to do the spatial discretization. And then we take the second order form, the wave equation and multiply it by a test fraction of W here and to the both side of the equation. And because we know the stress with the hooker no, we, we know they have some um, relationship with the stress. So we need to do the partial, um, how can I say? Uh, we need to 
for example, he, for, for, for this equation, we change, we go here with the integration by parts. And this part, this part will go outside. And this is the very important part is the traction in the two points. Because here, we know it's zero. So this part will disappear for the global simulation. But for the hybrid simulation, this part is very important because it's not disappear. It's a boundary conditions. And uh, we can say from this part, we can move here. When we finish the spatial discrimination, we can get the aim. Here is the math matrix. It's a global matrix and it's, it's, a, it's a diagonal. So we can get the Got, got his inversion directly. And this part will move to here. So K is a Stevens matrix. And F, FT here is the, from, this, from this value, from these terms. And normally, we, have, we do not have this one in global simulation, but for hybrid simulation, we have this part from here. So finally, we got the equation like this. Then we can use a new marker way to solve it. That means we can use the this, the, the Q displacement velocity and the acceleration, accelerations in the time step N and try to update to the N plus one. First, like this one is easy. And this one is a little bit hard because we need the, well, if we want to calculate the velocity in N plus one step, we need the information at the same time step, but we can calculate by this formula from here. So let me, we can, got the velocity at the n plus one time step. And then this one, we can got it too. Then it's a time iteration. iteration of, we can calculate from the, the first step to the second step. And then again, again, finally, we got the global waveform. And then this is a kind of a 2D and a 3D example. Here, we can say that we, can say that we also use some element to do the spatial discretization. Here, here we want to say something about the very, very high degree element. Normally people will use phi, but here you, you can see that in one element, we have so many heterogeneity inside. This is well, it has been, has been, um, has been validated that is very efficient. And the set, this one is a spectral element method is for 3D. Here is an is a example of the earth. We can see that, we can see that's because the radio is smaller for example, um, in the command boundary. So the animal size here will be, will be destroyed heavily. So in the very deep earth, there is a cubic to combine with the mesh in the mantle. So we can guard the full mesh of our earth and then do the global simulation. And then we move forward. Let's talk about something, a review of the hybrid numeric simulations. Here we have a summary. There is a two main hybrid, hybrid categories. The first one is a multi-point south method, and the second one is dis described. It's very, it's very hard to understand here, but we can say that this, this method is explicitly based on the representation theory. And the second one is depending on the implicit way, that means the equation in matrix way. Okay, the first one, we can see from this paper, they do something like the global simulation by the spectral any method and the DSM. They use the DSM to first calculate the traction along the boundary and then use it as a second source to do the hybrid simulations. We can see that this kind of like the P phase will be affected by the but a complicated molehole, yes. And uh, this is a very special physical representation theory because they use a free boundary condition, all of them, all the four boundaries. So that means the second part, this part will be zero. And finally, they, they got only the one surface uh, integration terms. This is a very special case. And uh, and uh, this me method we call it VM, and uh, this method this methodology has should satisfy the free surface boundary condition. So that means can only 
the, the we can only use the absorbing boundary condition, this kind of absorbing wave to absorb the scatter wave. We couldn't use the PMA. And it's, in fact, it's not very accurate for the complex target box. And, but because only traction is actually needed, so it's very memory saving. We only needed to we only need to record one physical wave. So it's very memory saving and uh, suitable for the 3D global simulations. We can see from here, AFT is the traction um, terms in these simulations. And if the, there are some local target model inside the box, the waveform like Q1 will be the Q0 will change to Q1 because of the local heterogeneities, but the traction is the same because we think the, the, heterogene the structure outside the box is not changed, but the waveform inside will be changed due because of the local model. And the second one is RP. It's the full representative theory. And the, it's also, we can say it's a physical way. That means we only, when we do the numerical simulations, we impose the traction term and the Q term, that displacement and traction, only on the interface at each point. And uh, it's a little bit different from the VM way because here now we need a displacement. But because but because of the full consideration, so now that means we can use PMA. And it's also very memory saving because we only needed uh, two physical, two, two waves, uh, two, sorry, two quantities, both exactly on the interface. That means if we do the 3D simulations, we only need a 2D, a 2D uh, hybrid input on the, exactly on the interface. But it is not accurate for the element within the south. That's, that means for the element outside the box, uh, near the interface, because the elements is, uh, the element is the location where the traction and displacement are imposed. So the waveform in that part is not very accurate. And then we have the new FQ here. Of course, FT is the same as the VM way, and it's zero just because the is from the background model and it's not changed during the calculation of a very complicated local model, but the waveform inside will be changed. And the, the, third, and the third method, and also the first uh, described differentiation way is, uh, the, is, this, is the, from the BIAC. It's not, a, it's not a physical way anymore. It's a numerical, it's a numerical way. The first to do the element, uh, spatial element distribution um, domain reduction. Yeah. And then when they do the global simulations, they first record the whole domain elements inside information. Now it's not a physical way, it's a numerical way now. So they uh, tell him seismic even like he, like, like the remote location can be re replaced equivalently by the numerical hybrids nodes on the GM point in the hybrid local domain, like the domain between two dash nines, and which is outside the box. And because it's, because it's used the full representative theory, so the PMA outside the box can be used, but they have some disappointment. That means all the displacement of the GM points are needed to calculate the recording in the layer. Now it's not a 2D, but the 2D surface multiplied by the numbers in, 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 the, in these directions. And we can find, finally, we can find the equation for the new force is in this kind of equation. Here we do not show it in detail, but because of the time limited. And it can be, it can be a little bit same like the RP way, but here, RT, FT is from traction and FQ is from the displacement. It's a physical way, but here we change it into the numerical way now. But because we know when we do the integration, if the 
we focus on physical, we only need the points exactly on the boundary. But if we do it in numerical way, we need the wave, we need information of the whole domain. And the second one is the Mason way. It is from the Ed Mason's paper. They have a, it's something the same as the by last method, but he choose he tried to say try to have a much compact way. That means he can do the hybrid simulation with any boundary for the box, but for with the information outside the the element here, 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 here. That means we only need the elements information, which is crossed by the boundary of the box. Here, the grade one domain is the box. And this is a more compact numeric high method, which can accurately perform the hybrid simulation in a local target model with any shapes. And of course, because the full way, so PML can be used. And the local domain mesh, that means the spatial discretization can be different from the global mesh, but we need some spatial interpolation. That means if the mesh here is different from outside, and, uh, and we also need the points in the element here, the black one, to, do the, to, be the, uh, to be calculate the hybrid input. If the mesh here and outside is different, we need the spatial interpolation. This will have some disadvantages. That is, well, not very accurate, but we can control it, in fact. And one thing is that we always need an additional hybrid element outside the box to impose hybrid input. That's what I mean. The hybrid element here is like this way. We always need the elements outside the box. But in fact, we do not need it. This is the either way. And we found that we can modify it. We only need the elements. The green one is the box. We only need the elements inside the box, oh, sorry, inside the box. So we, have, we can have few, we, we do not need additional element outside the box. And we also, we, some, we have the same features as either way, like the local and the global mesh are flexible, but need spatial interpolation when the mesh is different. And we also, we, we can use a PMA way, but one disadvantage is that we need so many GL points to be calculated. For example, here, like here we, in each, in each, in each element, we have five multiplied by four, 24, 25 elements, uh, points needed to be calculated and record. So here is a new compliant way proposed by us. And then we can say that you, because we have a formula here is from the VM way. And we have the second way just now, it's MYM way is in this formula. We can find that because KQ, K is a matrix. And, and this part is, is take memory because K, because we need a KQ. This calculation, this is the time consuming part, but, and it's also a memory, uh, memory consuming part, but we can replace the KQ by these two parts. Now, this is focused on the whole elements. We can change into the traction, oscillations, and displacements. All of them are exactly on the boundary, but not in the element anymore. So we can save the memory related to the MYM way. And we also, is memory saving relatively now because we have we need a three kind of quantities and the local and the global mesh are flexible and but uh, if and we can also use the PML because it's a full and here is a benchmark summary. Here is the five ways and then here is the new ways and uh, VMRP is used a physical way. That means the hybrid input is from the physical quantities like the VM is a traction velocity. And uh, here it is two kind of different situation. That means if the local and the global mesh are the same or different. For the physical way, this two kind of hyper input is the same for VM and RP way. And the, for the BY, YM, and YM, both use a numerical representation theory. And uh, 
for the by wave because they only use the elements so they only use the potential that means also the dis dis displacement for the elastic case potential is for the acoustic case and the either Meissner's way they use the interforce of potential these two parts and uh, for the mym way we the same as ymm but because we 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 do not need the additional layer so we have fewer memory and just the last one is we can use the traction potential oscillation to combine the VM way and the MYM way. And we will see what's the difference between doing the simulation in the following pages. And at least doing for the storage size, V3 is larger than V2 and larger than V1. Because V1 we know is the 2D interface memory part. And the volume for V3 is the uh, element size. So we can see that that means VM and RP and the, the new way, both memory saving relatively, and the BYYM and YM is relatively larger. And for the absorbing conditions, and the VM way can only use ABC because the free boundary condition should be, should be used. And for the others, we can use a PML. That means we, for the way here, we can do the hybrid simulation for the very complicated local structures. And here is a benchmark of the different hybrid methods. And this is the, the whole setting. I overlap one, two, three, four, five different time steps together to try to save the pictures number. And we can say that for the global simulations, Doing the, doing the global simulation, we can record the force and record the hyper input on the boundary and different elements and different color is show the different uh, way of the simulation. And then we also put some receivers inside the box to, bench, to benchmark the waveform, calculate from the different ways. Here is an example of the full, way, full RP and VM way. We can say that, we can say that the, uh, the waveform is very accurate. The difference between the global simulation, which is shown by black, and the red one is from the hybrid. The waveform here is very accurate. And uh, the, even multiplied by 10,000 is still, the error is about 0, 0, 0 0.01 percent. And we can see that for RP way, this, is, is, this way is very popular. But we can see the, the Waveform in the this element uh, in this receiver and this receiver is not very accurate just because of, of the spectral element method is not very not very accurate for the element within within the source. So that means all the wave field in the red part uh, in the red element is not accurate. And then is the MYM way and the new way we can find that. This way is very accurate. It's, it's even zero, even multiplied by 1040. Because this way they try to use the, use the global equation to get the same parallelizations in the local domain by, by using the part of the whole equation. And the, this, this one is a new way we can find that it's very accurate relatively to the VM way, but they have very good uh, way of is that the mesh is, you can see the mesh here can be very different from the global one. We can choose different mesh, different degree to do the local simulations. And the, here is an example of the 3D hybrid simulation. The left one is the heterogeneous model. It's a cosine model, that means a, or in X, Y, Z, both are cosine distribution. And this is the um, uh, simulation in one 10 step is a global simulation. And uh, we record, this is the local one. We record all the information on the six interface and, and impose the hyper input as a second force and do the hybrid simulation. We can record the receiver's waveform in the box. We can find that the error is about the same 0.01 percent, 
and the and the final part is the hybrid simulation example for the, of the Yellowstone. I'm sorry for the picture is not very good quality because it, we just finished it yesterday. And so here we use the source outside the Yellowstone and with some station inside and station outside the domain. And we can add a local prune model in the box. Here is a 200 um, kilometers depth um, picture. We can see the first benchmark with the prune with the print model and the prune blue model. We can see the red one is from the global simulation by the spectral element method global uh, spec film. And the black dash one is from the local hybrid simulation. The waveform is really good. It's uh, the difference, the uh, difference is about one person error, both for the E and Z components. And uh, we can see the, the delayed waveform due to the plume. The red one is from the homo global simulations, uh, is, is from the local hybrid simulation, but without the plume. And the black dash one is with the plume inside, because we know the plume is low velocity. And we can see the, the phase is dilated. And this kind of difference, waveform difference, is very, is very useful for the inversion in the near future. And the main content in this topic is from these two papers. The first one is, the, is also the same title of the, our talk. It's, it's just some, it's, it's now is in under review in secondary review. And this one is we almost finish, it, almost finish and prepare to submit to GGI. Yes, thank you for your attention. Any questions, suggestions? Thank you, Dr. Chow. Thank you for the wonderful presentation. Some yeah, questions? yeah. So I have a question. Yeah. If, um, so if you use a hybrid method, you're going to be saving a uh, factor of 1,000, you, you said earlier in the talk, in um, numerical, numerical cost. Yeah. Um, but um, you're basically uh, modeling a particular kind of uh, scattering problem where you're assuming that the rest of the Earth is not contributing to your wave field. So, so how... Um, how can you be sure that um, the model that you get with the hybrid part and localizing the structure um, is, is the whole story and that there aren't waves that come in from other parts of the heterogeneous earth that uh, complicate the wave field? Mm. You, you showed a slide at the very beginning like that. Um, this one? It, it is, and <clears throat> No, the uh, couple more. Yeah, that one. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. So even when when uh, when the Earth is partially known, you're yeah. not uh, getting the the complete wave field out of it. Yes. Good question. Yes, in fact, and uh, and we know that we we indeed don't know something outside the box. And this may be uh, affect our result. But the main point is that we can choose a very good recovery for, for the source and receiver, both remote from our box. And uh, if we think about there is a heterogeneity outside of the box, this kind of heterogeneity is only propagated by very few paths and it's not propagated is not crossed by many other paths. So let's mean when we do the misfit function, we will see this kind of heterogeneities. Affection will be average to zero. When we do something like a south stack, when we do something like stacking the signal, you will see some, some local signal will be removed by average. This is, this is something we think. I don't know whether I answer your question yet. Uh, 
Fight, uh, fight, I guess fight. I, just, I wasn't wasn't sure what you're right. So when you stack, what are you stacking? Okay, uh, here I, I I can give you an example here. For example, when we do the box tomography, we always use a, a, a very relatively long period model. For example, we got the, from the 20 seconds and uh, we want to have a 10 seconds uh, inversion doing the box. We always need to choose because we want to find the structure about the local domain. We need to have, we need to choose some very good source and station have a very good coverage like the CMB. We need to choose a very good coverage about the source and receivers. So that means like we can choose some phase like the HC, HD to, I'm sure we are sure that this kind of phase HC are, are pro progressing to the box, but it will be affected by the sun heterogeneity outside the box. But if there is, we know there is only very few paths between some very few source and the stations will be affected by the hidden gene, local heterogeneity outside box. When you do the inversion, you will calculate the misfit function like the average of every path. You will see that this kind of local affection will be average and will be removed out, will, will be removed because it's only affect very few data. Not many of the data is not affected by the local heterogeneity outside the box. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so how, how, how is it that you uh, choose your data then? Um, uh, is, is it basically uh, kind of a qualitative view of you know um, wave propagation in a in a spherically symmetric earth uh, to kind of estimate first what you think the coverage will be right? like just ray path density or something like that yes um, yes for for example if you want to do the Iceland we, we need to choose like the face like a and for example if we want to do the box tomography with only the location just about, for example, 500 above the common boundary. We need some face like the ACS, like the point is exactly inside the box, ACS, and also some face like SHD, yeah, SHD. That means we, we, we can choose the, the distance and choose the very accurate, uh, very limited, of course, very limited phase to do the inversion. But what's something very interesting is that we can choose many, many stations, receiver outside the box. Mm -hmm. It's very flexible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so uh, from a practical standpoint, um, how high of a frequency can you go to uh, for, say, this Iceland uh, model? Or can I, you show a couple of different Yeah, if I can, if, if, in fact, uh, you know, for the global tomography now, and uh, we know that Princeton go to 20 seconds and even more, I, I think for current state. And for our group now is about, uh, in fact, uh, the tomography now is about 18 seconds. And uh, for, the, for the box tomography, we know the main computer con co cost is for, for the forward simulation inside the box. And because the size of the box is very small relatively to the global size, so the full resolution is not decided by the calculation anymore. It's decided by the data. So that means it's five seconds. I think it's, if we want to use ACE wave, it's about five seconds. But we know that if we want to do the five seconds global tomography, mm -hmm. we, the whole calculation will be, is, is, uh, is very expensive for the global. But for second, five seconds for our case, it can be arrived. Okay, thank you. Yeah, my pleasure.
I have a quick question. So you, you said in the best case scenario, you could go to five seconds. What type of spatial resolution would that correspond to? And what type of um, structural features do you think you'll be able to recognize? Uh, in fact, until now, we still don't know because we know that until now, we do not have five seconds to result in the deep earth, yeah. And um, what we want to do is try to find the, like the, uh, for the plume, we want to find the, the uh, how can I say, the, the size, in fact, the size of the plume and also the size of your VZ. You know, sometimes when the, when the um, small scale anomaly, the size is too small, we couldn't find it. We can only find the size, the, the size with the same resolution as the full wave inversion. So five seconds, if the VS is, is five near the, in the low mantle, five, so five multiplied by five is 25. So the, we, the maximum um, resolution we can arrive is about 25 kilometers. So that means we can find maybe the ULVZ uh, thickness, maybe. But let's see, until now we, we still don't know. But at least we, we can find the structure of the plume, the size in the deep mantle. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Very interesting work. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. Hello, Dr. Chow. Can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, so uh, yeah, can you explain the, the the concept again? Like how did you do this uh, hybrid simulation? This looks like you save some traction information at the interface of the uh, the target area. Is that yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, they, mm, in, you know, it's uh, I, to be honest, it's a, it's a little bit very hard to explain very clearly. But one way, very interesting way, is to to we from the a representation theory directly. For example, when we do the global simulation, we use the information from the source for command center directly. That means we only, when we do the when we do the forward simulation, we only need the information for the source because the surface is free. So that means the traction is free, and then the traction here from the green function is is, is zero. These two these two terms both zero. So we only need the body force inside the Earth to do the global simulation. But for the box simulation, let's mean hybrid simulation, we do not have the body force inside the box. But in fact, we have these two terms, the traction on the boundary and the displacements on the boundary. This information is very important. If you do the simulation, you will find that if we only impose the traction, only impose this term, in the boundary, you will see the, the waveform, the contribution is 50% inside the box and also 50% outside the box. And uh, for the displacement due to the focal, focal mechanism region, the contribution inside is 50% and outside is minus 50%. So the whole contribution is the one inside, zero outside. So that means we can get the for away from inside, but 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 the traction and the displacement is from the global simulations. When we do the global simulation, we need the information. We need to calculate and record the information exactly on the boundary. So you you did a global simulation first and save the, the, the like, traction information and displacement information on the boundary of the target area and yeah yes yeah, true and then use that information to do a simulation again for the target area and the, com compare the two simulations together true yes that's what so, we did yeah so i mean if you firstly they did a global simulation uh you, you still need to set like model parameters out, outside of that area, right? No, we do not no. need, we, okay. we, yeah, when we do the global simulation, we only mm. 
to calculate and record the information on the boundary. So let's mean we, we do not record anything outside the box. I mean, you, do you need to see like uh, elements outside of the boundary for the global simulation? Yes, indeed we need. When we do the global simulation, in the first step, we need to do, we need to do the global simulations, but we do not need to do the inversion of the global yeah. outside the box. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if the goal of the method is trying to save like times and memories because we don't need to use so many model parameters as like elements outside of the target area. Yeah. But, but for the first step, you still have to do a one simulations. You have to use that. Is that correct? Uh, <clears throat> I'm sorry. I I I I do not get it. I mean, for the first global uh, simulation, you have seen many elements for the entire uh, region, right? Yeah, yes, true. Even for the outside of the, the this area. Yes, yes. But that's not the, the way, I mean, that's not what you want to say, like, don't use so many crazy for that region. Yeah, you know, the, the main part is that we really want to use the 3D mm -hmm. global model. Okay. We, we, we had now, yeah. If we want to use the pre model directly, it can be very easy to calculate by the, by the not a numerical simulation, but the, something like a DSM FK to calculate. Of course, it's very efficient. But if we want to go forward, that we want to use the, now the, the 3D background model, like the, we have already have very good limitage, we have very good simulation waveform for the 20 seconds. That's we want to know. Because you know, 20 seconds means that the, the structure have the same size of 20 seconds has already been funded by the by these two, by, by the tomograph, global tomography. But how about where is this a small scale? We need the information of outside to have a very good uh, foundation for the local research. So we need we do need the global simulation. Okay. We, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I play it. Any more questions? Yeah, I, I have a like quick short question. Yeah. Yeah, could you please uh, go to <clears throat> the box where you said when we have, yeah, that one. So when you have no no data out in the, in the box for the simulation, like slide number eight. Yeah, this one. Yeah, yeah. here like for the second one, you said when you are fully unknown. Yeah. Uh, the difference between the global and your hybrid simulation is like one is 0.9, one is 0.7. So how you get information when you have like no, in like unknown, like when you are unknown, how you okay. get information? Uh, yeah, yes. In fact, here fully unknown is not very accurate. Here we, we say like we, for example, we use a 1D model, like we use a print model as a background model. It's not a fully unknown, at least we know the print model but it's 1D, yeah. So, but in fact, we know the structure outside the box is not 1D, it's a 3D. So here is an example that we do the box tomography with 1D structure outside as a starting model. But here, when we do the inversion, we use the 3D, but, but long period. For example, this, is a, this model is, a, is, very, is with long period, short period model but we can do something like smooth to get the long period. In fact, here they use something like homogenization to do the smooth, but they, they are sure that long period wave, waveform are accurate when, we, when they got the long period model as, they use the homogenization to guard the long period model as the background model. But in this long period model, the waveform is accurate for long period. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I got it. So you yeah. have the clear model here, thank you. Yeah. Any more questions?
Well, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for participating. And thank you, Dr. Chow, for the wonderful presentation. Yeah, yeah, my pleasure. Thank you for the presentation. Yes.